One of the things that can make a website look the most beautiful is the typography. And frequently you might see sites that you really like or you think are beautiful, but you're not really sure what's going on with them. Well, you could use the Firefox font editor to inspect another website and see what it is that they're doing with their typography. Let's look here. There's a website at the Audubon Society that's really quite beautiful. It stands out to me in part because of the way that they're using fonts. Uh, and I can inspect this element. And you'll notice here I have the DevTools set up to be docked to the right, but of course you can use this drop down over here to switch it to dock to bottom or left. And you'll also notice that I've got this three pane editor setup going. And if you don't have that, you can click this little button and open it up. And then over here, I've got the HTML at the top, I got the CSS on the left, and on the right, we have here other options. It's defaulting at this point in late 2019 to layout, but I can switch it to the font editor. And we can see, let's go ahead and inspect, I'll right click on some text, inspect element that's going to jump us over here to our text. And we can see that this is Source Sans Pro. We can switch to the computed tab and we can see the computed that here, Source Sans Pro, font size 18, font weight 400. But it's actually, I find, a little bit easier to understand over here in the font editor. And if we wanted to mess around with it, we can mess around with it. We can play with it and see what it might look like. We're working on our own website. We're working on our own project. What does it look like if we adjust the line height or we adjust the spacing of the letters? For any of you who've designed in a browser or you've tweaked a design in CSS, you might realize that, of course, you could hand write these numbers, and lots of times we do when we come in here and we kind of like arrow up and arrow down through different sizes. But there really is actually something really nice about using these sliders to make it faster. Let's look here at the New York Times website. We can look and see what fonts they're using. Uh, another thing about the font editor is that if you go all the way to the bottom, it says all fonts on the page at the bottom, and you can open this up and you can look at all of the fonts that are in use on this particular web page. And I can see here that, oh gosh, these really beautiful fonts. What are these fonts? I would like to use these fonts. Can I use these fonts? Where did they get these fonts from? We can see here that these are all custom fonts that the New York Times had made by a company Ah, oh, that's why it's so amazing, because they're using these fonts. Um, if we go back to the Audubon Society and we look at their list of fonts, we can see, um, I think that these are coming in from Google Fonts. Um, we could hunt down this URL here and go investigate. Sometimes the URL that comes up will show you the company that they're licensing the fonts from and where they can come from. Also, if you're having troubles with understanding why your fonts aren't loading or something, some of this in here, when it comes to URLs or the font face syntax can help you track down what's wrong. So another thing I wanted to show you, if a font doesn't seem to be loading or you're not sure what font it is that's running on the page, if you go to a place uh, on a web page, let's inspect this paragraph text here. We can see if we scroll all the way down, we find the font family declaration. Uh, we can, oh, it's here. So in this particular place, font family, Source Sans Pro is underlined because that's the font that's actually being used at this particular instance. And we can hover over it and see a little bit of a sample text for that particular font. Maybe if something goes wrong with the Source Sans Pro, here actually I could like show you if I change the name and there's no, that's not a font. So Verdana is now being used and we can see that this is Verdana and we can tell that because that's what's being underlined. And if we hover, we can see a sample of Verdana in our hover. If you hover over the name of the font, the second name, the smaller one, then it will show you on the page where it is that that font is being used. I can hover here under Source Sans Pro Regular, and it will show me all the different places that that font is being used. Or I can scroll up to the top and hover over. I can see there that's also Source Sans Pro Regular, or up here is Source Sans Pro Lite. Also, one other thing about this all fonts on the page, this font preview text, you could come in here and type something, uh, maybe your company logo or a little bit of text from your company, and see that font in your text, and then be able to say, oh, do I like this font? You know, I this Noto Serif, I've never seen it before. I actually uh, do kind of like it. Let me go track it down and see if maybe I want to use this font or not. The Firefox font editor, though, really starts to come alive if you're using a variable font. 
So let's look at this variable font demo that Microsoft made uh, to kind of show off and to explain variable fonts and what they are and what they do. Let's look here at where it says variable tides and I'll inspect this element. And we can see that rather than having steps for the weight where it jumps from 100 to 200 to 300 to 400, which is what CSS does, has done for a very long time when it comes to having normal or bold or some sort of weight in your font. Um, a variable font now has this continuous slider because you can set it to any number that you want to. And this will show you if you hover this, it says here 300 and 700. That's telling us that this particular font, not all variable fonts, in general, you can set a variable font. You can range it from one to 999, I think. Uh, but the font itself, that file has some data in it that tells the browser like which ones are actually going to work. So this particular font is going to do things between 300 and 700. And then we can uh, slide it along and we can see, we can change it and see it change. You can see up there where it says variable tides that it's getting more bold or less bold. Um, we can also adjust the width very much the same way. We can make it wider and wider and wider or we can make it narrower and narrower and narrower. This is all from the same font file. There's just one file here. There's not a whole bunch of files. Um, a lot of the most beautiful fonts like I really love Avenir. I used Avenir Next on a project for a long time. I wanted to use it very, very thin and condensed and also very, very bold and thick and all sorts of other variations. I wanted to use maybe five or six or seven different variations of Avenir, but I couldn't ask the user to put up the download bandwidth to download six or seven different fonts. With a variable font, with a variable font version of Avenir Next, for example, it could be designed that font so that it had a wide range of weight and a wide range of width in the same exact font. And then you would only ask the user to download one font file and you'd use CSS to go ahead and tweak exactly which version of the font it is. It's just math. It's a whole bunch of vector math and it's all baked into the variable font file. Firefox font editor is gonna really give you the chance to see is that a variable font or not? What could I do with this font? I could sit here and play with these for hours, really, in order to tweak my topography and figure out, you know, what really looks good? Uh, does it look good to make it this extreme and that extreme combined? Or how can I take this same font file and stretch it into all these different places on my page and make a beautiful range of typographic color and emphasis, voice, tone, express all of these things while still using one font file? Theoretically, you can do that in your head, but I really, I, I love getting into a browser and really tweaking it for real and not messing in Photoshop or a different program where it actually looks very, very different, but sitting here inside a browser and tweaking uh, in this tool here. If you're more interested in variable fonts, you can go to v-fonts.com and find a whole bunch of variable fonts. They have built onto this website as you're learning about the fonts, these same sort of sliders, and it's a good chance to quickly be able to see what's going on with variable fonts. Access Praxis is another really great website with a whole bunch of different fonts. Um, some that are really kind of crazy and just for fun, just sort of pushing the boundaries of what's possible with a variable font and messing around and playing and seeing what kinds of things might be possible. If you want to learn more about the Firefox font editor, there's a page on MDN where you can read about all of the different things it does, all of the different little secret things that are baked inside. I hope this tool is really useful for you. If you have other ideas or requests about this tool and what you wish it did, feel free to leave a comment on the page for this video. We'd, we'd really love to hear from you. Or if you know how to file a bug in Bugzilla and you find a bug, definitely do that. Um, the team who's made the Firefox DevTools font editor would really like to know how it's working for you.